Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. We are passing through Corbin, Kentucky. You know what that means. Birthplace of Kentucky Fried Chicken. We're gonna stop off and check out the old Sanders Chicken Shack. Good chance he's just gonna go ahead and sleep while we're in there. There's our KFC birthplace sign. Isn't that amazing? I have been here before, but its uh, I've only been here once because for like two years they had it closed to remodel it. Look at this. This place is quite an experience. Cafe and Museum, the birthplace of the original recipe. Love and herbs and spices, inspired by a recipe from his mother. One of the real reasons we had to come here is because last time I was here, I got a pair of Colonel Sanders socks and I wore them out and it's almost shorts weather, so I need to replenish those. This place is honest to God, kind of like stepping back in time. All the way down to the spinning bucket. Too bad it's a rainy day. There he is. This used to be a major thoroughfare. It still kind of is. It gets a lot of traffic, but not quite like what it did when the Colonel had his gas station here. Once they built Route 75, pretty much killed a lot of his business. He had a gas station here originally. That's what they have depicted here. And then when he wasn't making enough money from that, he had to come up with an alternative, which is where he came up with, maybe I should sell some food, some fried chicken, have a little bit of a boarding house, like a little motel here. So they have it broken down here. You can see where he would have had Firebird, Pure Products. It says, the Colonel was born in 1890 in Henryville, Indiana to Wilbert and Margaret Dunleavy Sanders, September 9th. Sanders joined the army at the age of 16 and seized service in Cuba. 1912, organizes a corporation to sell stock for a ferry boat, the Froman Coots, to run between Jefferson, Indiana and Louisville. 1927, Sanders forms a corporation in Nicholsville, Kentucky, where he operates a service station, Harlan Sanders' first marketing Master Stroke, a sign advertising free air. <laughs> Which, boom, he was doing it even here. So then, 1930, he moved here. Corbin, Kentucky, where he operates his first restaurant. Consists of a table and six chairs in the small front room of his Shell Oil service station. There he is working it right there. They got a photo of the dining room and in 1931 he moved across the road and begins Sanders service station selling pure oil products. The new location had a dining room for restaurant owners. And then over here it tells the story of becoming a popular restaurant over here where he would start offering pressure fried chicken on when it opened on July 4th. This new secret recipe. 1939, Sanders Court and Cafe listed in Duncan Hines Adventures in Good Eating Restaurant and part of the motel destroyed by fire. So this is what it looked like at the time. When he had his first franchisee, 400 restaurants, and then eventually sold it. Now, this place is amazing. Like I said, it's, um, it's a throwback to the design of the old motel. And they have a historic sign that I'll read to you and then the inside will blow your mind. It's unbelievable. And you can actually get food here. Colonel Harlan Sanders began the part of his life that brought him fame in a small gasoline service station on the opposite side of this highway. So he would have originally been over here before he moved. 
It says, born on September 9th, 1890 near Henryville, Indiana. He left school at 12 to support his family. Held a variety of jobs as farmhand, soldier, railroader, secretary, insurance salesman, and ferry boat operator until 1930 when he came to Corbin, moved his family into quarters behind the station, and started pumping gasoline. This was then a main route to and from Florida, from the north. Traffic slowed during the Great Depression, so Sanders, who enjoyed cooking, augmented his meager income by selling meals to tourists. His food was liked, his reputation grew, and his career as a restaurateur began. And then it says on the other side, this is a double cider. In 1932, he bought the small restaurant near this site. Here he combined good cooking, hard work, and showmanship to build regional fame for his fine food. His restaurant and a motel now gone flourished. To serve his patrons better, Sanders constantly experimented with new recipes and cooking methods. Here he created, developed, and perfected his world famous Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe. In 1956, plans were announced for a federal highway to bypass Corbin. Threatened with the traffic loss, Sanders, then 66 and undaunted, sold the restaurant and started traveling. He started traveling America selling seasoning and his recipe for fried chicken to other restaurants. His success in this effort began the world's largest commercial food service system and made Kentucky a household word around the world. All right, now that you have heard nothing but information since we've been here let's go on in this side they actually have like the pressure cookers and all that stuff and the recreation of the old mobile port and then you enter over here and the actual modern restaurant is in here look at this as soon as you walk in of course you can order your food here but right on the floor Harlan Sanders Cafe Here's the few items that they have that you can purchase. I hate where it all began. But I can't, I'm coming for the socks. <laughs> so right over here when you first walk in, they have one of the old striped uniforms on display from the 1960s, along with a picture of the girls wearing it. It actually has Kentucky Fried Chicken on the label. It's kind of funny. And then over here, really cool weather vane of the Colonel. And then you go over here, and there's like a little mini museum that takes you into an old fashioned dining room. So, there he is with John Neal, director of franchising. And here is a giant 1950s hand-painted sign. Way, way, way larger than life. That's probably, I would guess, 15 feet tall, 16 feet tall. And then here it says, before he was the colonel, he was a man. Man on a mission that would involve hard work, dedication, and chicken. Where other men would have given up, this man would succeed in making it a reality. The fruits of his labor, Kentucky Fried Chicken, his name. Good bust of him. And then over here, of course, one of his trademark white suits. And after he sold the restaurant and everything, he was the face of the franchise for several years. So it's very cool. This is all on display. Along with telling his story over here, some historic family photographs we'll look through. His old service station. There's Harland and his mother. Like I mentioned, they have an old fashioned dining room, and this is it. Look at all the fixtures, it's all wood paneling. You got a great big statue of the Colonel here and a historic booth here. Colonel's picture. 
And the cool thing is they tell you, they do a good job of kind of explaining what you're looking at. So over here it says, service with a smile. Waitress Leota McBurney shows us a typical 1940s table setting and menu from the cafe. Superior friendly service was a major part of Harlan's business success. So this was one of the original tables, it says. Original furnishings, hard rock maple, and exceptionally high quality for the period. And the place setting is just very, <laughs> very KFC, what we would know KFC, that red and white. Great picture of him up there. And then you actually get to walk through one of the rooms of the mobile court, which is in here. I love that the statue has a big giant bucket of chicken with him smiling deviously. <laughs> Reminds me of So I Married an Axe Murder. Oh, you're gonna buy my chicken. Oh, the Colonel with his wee beady eyes. So here they have a sign right for you in the room that says, this model motel room was placed at the center of the cafe for a reason. Harlan wanted to market his motel and show how nice his rooms were by placing it here. Anyone sitting or going to the restroom could see it. So this was like his his marketing idea was to actually put one of the rooms in here. So behind us would have been where you could uh, get ready for the day. And then the showers. Sanders Cafe Court. Sanders Court and Cafe. And then this takes you into the actual restaurant, the old restaurant, where you can eat in here if you want. Has some historical signs worth checking out. But if you would have come in here Originally, this would have been the entrance. They actually have etched glass, which I like. If you look, you can see it says Harlan Sanders. So over here is where they would have made the food. Kind of cool, you can see exactly how it would have been prepared how the setup would have been. Of course he was famous for that pressure cooker method. And then the other side is the dishwashing. Pretty neat. And then over here you have a model of what it all looked like originally. But this leads you the kitchen area in here it leads you basically into a separate room with the recipe vault in here look at that no getting it open today Eleven herbs and spices, secret recipe, hidden. Very cool. And then there is a copy of the pressure cooker that he started with, like a replica. And then over here, a bunch of the herbs and spices that are used. But what's kind of cool is that if you work your way back through, they have an additional eating area that's a full-on museum look at this like merchandising museum with another colonel original postcard for the court and look he actually ran for office <laughs> can you imagine senator sanders all the fixtures I mean, this place is just amazing. The old signage. 
They don't even do the It's Finger looking good anymore. Some old booth seating. And then look, kind of an homage to all the merchandise. Like over here, they have the history of the bucket right there. There's some of the old buckets and things that you could get. That's like a warming bucket. <laughs> But over here they actually have like a whole history of the bucket, which I thought was cool. So you can actually spin them around and see what. You could no joke spend like an entire day here just reading up on the history of the franchise, his history. <laughs> All the changes it's went through. And they have like a lot of the old menus and things like that. Which I think that's kind of cool to see because now, look at those. I mean, <laughs> not every place can just offer Crocs with a piece of chicken on it. Hey, there's Buckethead. Kentucky table over here. <laughs> the Colonel Sanders record. Yeah, the fire log. You could join the birthday club. Then over here, the classic masks. They actually sell these. You can buy these here. The faces. You can stick those in your back window and make it look like the colonel's riding along with you. And then this shows all the places there are KFCs. Colonel Ashtray, salt and pepper shakers, ice scraper, and all the rebranding they've done. Look, here's like different images of the Colonel all the way down to like South Park. Ripped Colonel. And then here they just kind of pay homage to all the people that did the Colonel Sanders commercials. Dolph Ziggler, the wrestler. <laughs> Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. And they have a mirror here and it says, who will be next? It could be you. This place is fantastic. Totally free also. You can just come in and look around. But before we go buy our socks and take off, there's one last thing I have to do. Come over here and take my customary photo with the Colonel. He's had people over here with him pretty much the entire time I've been here. <laughs> Popular. So there's a story to these. These are the original bricks from the smokehouse that used to be out back. It's always a fun visit, Colonel, but we gotta call it a day. Kind of insane, I just went in the bathroom and uh, they have a recording of him telling directions on how to get here <laughs> from the, from like different routes. Kind of funny. All right, let's get my socks. Long line, they do get a lot of people here. Both checking out the museum and eating. All right, we got our socks. It took about 10 minutes in that line to get them. And then when I uh, said I wanted the white ones, the guy came back with the black ones. I actually thought to myself, from all the stories I've heard, Colonel Sanders would lose his mind at the service in here. How long that line got, that there's only one person taking orders. I mean, I think he'd go crazy. <laughs> but that is it for us. We're gonna call it a day. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye. Yeah.